Now I'll show you a, uh, a couple extra skills that a, or fundamental skills that a, an at-home cook should possess. Um, this is a, a red snapper. I picked this up at a Korean market down the street. Now when you're picking up fish, don't be afraid to, to touch it, to check it out, to ask them to look at it. If they don't let you look at it, then walk out of that store immediately because you need to guarantee the freshness if you're going to pay the prices that most people charge for fish. So uh, a few things you're looking for. Um, the eyes should be clear. This is a beautiful clear eye, so this, this fish has probably been, it's, it's been out of the water for less than five days, I'd say. Uh, I had them scale it and, uh, and gut it. Now I'll fillet this myself, I'll show you guys how to. Also it shouldn't be slimy. There's, there are certain fish, like uh, like monkfish, where the flesh it has a membrane on it that's slimy, but the skin itself, itself shouldn't be slimy. It should smell like the ocean. Um, cer certain fish do smell slightly fishy, but it shouldn't have that quintessential fishy smell to it. Uh, also, uh, the gills inside they should be uh, it should be you know pink, not not brown or discolored. So the backbone's facing me, and the tail is away. Now what I'm going to start is an incision right behind this little fin. I'm not really keen on my anatomy with fish, I can't remember what they call it. So I'll make an incision right there and then there's a uh, there's a bone right here so I'm going to cut around that just to the backbone. Now I'm going to use the backbone as a guide. I'll just make a small incision along it head to tail and then I'm going to use the little pin bones as a guide and they just scrape away. Now when you get a fish net this you should hear that, I don't know if you can hear it on my camera, but it's a, it's a slight scraping sound. And when you get to that top portion, just cut through it there, guide your knife all the way down. There's gonna be a little, uh, little membrane that you want to cut away. Also contains a few bones. Actually, for ease' sake, for you guys, this is a skill you'll acquire later. I would just waste a little bit, cut it away. Nice squared-off piece. We'll worry about this later when I show you in depth how to butcher fish well. And so now I got a skin on filet. I'm going to use a tweezers. You can pick this up at a restaurant supply store, maybe even Walmart or, or Kmart. Let's look into the, the beauty supply area. Now there's, uh, there's some bones that run down this fish. I'm just going to remove those quickly. The easiest way to feel for the bones, they uh, they run at an angle, in a direction. So just feel against the grain. Oh, there, I missed one right there. Just feel along the fish against the grain and kind of uh, kind of gently just push them so they, they lie straight up so they're easier to, to pull out. Okay, so I got a skin on fillet of red snapper. Uh, Teflon pan preheated or ceramic. I, I would recommend a, a, a non stick surface on the pan. It's hot already. Add some grapeseed oil.
And initially the protein is going to curl up as they coagulate. So I just hold down the, uh, the fish for the initial few seconds as it starts to cook and it helps it to be flat. I would recommend a spatula for this. I've burned my hands so many times that there's very little feeling in them, so I'm able to do that. So I want to cook this fish about 90% on the skin side to get it nice and crispy. And then when it's about 90% done, I'll flip it over for literally two or three seconds, then pull it out of the pan just to kiss the, uh, the uncooked side. And it'll be cooked after that. Okay, so this pan in the back, I got a cauliflower puree. And when I make certain pastries, I like to separate, uh, separate my eggs. So. A lot of times I'll use whites, so I have yolks left over. So I'm going to use this into my puree to make it more rich and fatty and delicious. I have a pan outside the camera with uh, some olive oil in it, and I'm going to use these vegetables that we just blanched to uh, provide my lunch. Okay, puree is hot. Now, while I add these yolks, I'm going to use a whisk to incorporate them or else they'll turn into a, a curdled scrambled egg mess in the pan. I'm going to turn this to the heat for a few seconds as I whisk to allow those yolks to cook completely and thicken. Parsley for color. Just stick this on top of the uh, top of the stove, but not on direct heat, so it stays warm. Fish is real close. So this veg doesn't need much salt because I salted it heavily when it's blanching. So let's use a little pinch. You can see on this fish, the sides are brown, well, the skin is brown, and it's just about there. Slowly turning opaque in the very top, That's exactly what we're looking for. As far as the plate, Take the cauliflower puree, put it in the center. Now I'm a fan of the, the spoon squish, I mean, it looks fancy. Fish is just about ready. The veg is good to go, so place it at random on the plate. Now you can serve this with a sauce, but you know, 
not to, not to talk myself up, but I think I'm a pretty damn good cook, so this fish will be nice and juicy, it doesn't require a sauce, and also the puree will kind of add a nice richness and be a good substitute for a sauce. So it's nice and crispy on that side. So this is lunch. Hope I made you guys hungry. Uh, cauliflower puree, green beans, Brussels sprouts, baby carrots, and seared snapper. I'm gonna go enjoy this. Hope you enjoyed my video.